which better place to choose than a beautiful park like this to give me the opportunity to once again talk about the Dharma. One of my favorite pastimes, talking about the Dharma. As we enter into the world of spiritual growth, of spiritual transformation, we soon find out that many, many things are to be considered. <clears throat> we discover that it is not just enough to meditate. Many other things are to be considered also. And one of the very important things um, that I attempt to teach in my work is called the psychology of meditation. Now, the psychology of meditation, what exactly is that? The psychology of meditation um, teaches us and invites us to become conscious of which patterns, what thought programs we pursue, we repeat, we use day in, day out, that actually cause us to suffer. And the psychology of meditation reveals and makes clear to us which methods we use that we end up in a state of suffering. And as we become more and more conscious, we will become very, very surprised sooner or later to discover that we are very attached to certain programs, we are very attached to certain behaviorisms that are toxic. So it becomes imperative to discover what programs we use uh, to, that cause us suffering and to let go of those programs. And that sometimes is not very easy because these behaviorisms are long held, they're deeply ingrained into our psyche and after that, discovering these, these programs to let go of them is not a one day affair, it takes long training. Which is why the Tibetans are quite correct when they say it is necessary to, to control the mind. We control the mind by becoming aware which thought patterns are toxic and by removing them, by letting go of these thought patterns. In the yogic world there is a little phrase that says Raga Dvesha Klesha and that phrase is important. It means like and dislike are obstacles. The Buddha would certainly underscore this when he says all of our suffering is based on one simple fact. It is based on the fact that we desire things. So his solution is, well, let go of your desires, let go of your preferences, enter into the pristine clarity of this very moment without desires, just being in the moment, and all your suffering will disappear. One of the greatest secrets, one of the greatest secrets in the process of obtaining happiness is this. Stop running after happiness and happiness comes running after you. Now that to me that is absolutely of pivotal importance to understand this. Stop running after happiness. Happiness comes. Let go. Arrive in this moment. Be here now as Ram does has said long time ago, Ram Das is still right today. Be here now. Let go of your desires. Let go of all your toxic thought patterns and goodness will arrive and will embrace you. So as I said, to let go of one's desires, to let go of the ultimate desire for happiness, of course that is no small thing. Uh, and that requires training because we will snap back into our old habits, into our old patterns. So therefore we forget, we refocus, we forget this is the training, this is the process of awakening. We, f we get, go back into our old behaviorisms, we go back into our old patterns 
we have to remember. It's a, it's a journey of remembering to create the right attitude, to create the right, um, the right relationship to life itself. And life itself, basically, it just is in the moment, in the here now. And for us to join this beautiful play of the universe by being consciously in the moment, that is the challenge and that's the invitation. Stephen Hawking has made this remarkable statement which I found very fascinating. He said that the more you understand the universe, the more actually you are capable of controlling it. I think this is a rather remarkable and very, very powerful statement. And in my own perception, it does correlate with uh, the first statement that was found on the Emerald Tablet. That statement said that as above, so below, as below, so above. And it added, if you understand this truth, you will be able to create magic in your life. If you understand what is above, you can use it below. If you understand that the entire universe is governed by very specific laws, and if you begin to utilize these laws that govern the universe on a grand scale, if you utilize these laws on the smaller scale of your own life, you will be able to create a life that you will truly, truly enjoy. And for me, this is fascinating. And one of the most important um, laws of the universe is that whatever thoughts you think on a repeated uh, and continued level, these thoughts, they will begin to manifest for you. Whatever thoughts, even if these thoughts are unconscious, they will begin to manifest. So again, the Tibetans are right when they say, control your mind, pay attention to what you think, and stop thinking negative thoughts, because if you are half conscious in a daze, living your daily life, your daily routines, and you think these defeatist thoughts, these thoughts will come to you, they will come true. If you think once or twice a day, well, I don't have money, guess what? You are creating a reality where you don't have money. If you think money is coming, money is coming, money is coming, make that your mantra, guess what? money is coming to you and the thoughts that repeat more and more that acquire a more and more substantial momentum these thoughts they will create your life so therefore choose carefully what you think because your thoughts they will manifest they will come true Choose your thoughts wisely. Your thoughts will create your future. Today's thoughts create your life tomorrow. Think beautiful thoughts, think powerful thoughts, think compassionate thoughts, think thoughts that help mankind and that help you. We live in a world where more and more is being talked about the theme of awakening. What is awakening? Well, if we ask the ancient yogis, they say awakening and sleep are simply our existential modalities. We are asleep when we believe that we are separate from this world. We are asleep when we believe and think that the person in front of us is a separate entity. Life as it unfolds before us is something that I am separate from. 
So therefore, because I am separate from humanity, I am separate from the people, I am separate from nature, I engage in behaviors that are fear-based because if I'm separate from other people, separate from the universe, well, the first thing that I will do is think, well, well, maybe that's not enough for me. If I am separate, I have to take care of my needs and I have to enter into a state of competition. Yes? So that is sleep. Sleep is the belief of being separate, the consequent attitude of competition and then of course fighting with others because we are separate from them and we are afraid that we're not going to get enough. That is being asleep. And being awake, what does it mean to wake up to being really awakened? What is a Buddha? What is a Christ? A Buddha and a Christ, these are beings who are existentially awake in the sense that something has happened to them, that they discovered a perception that they are not separate from the rest of life. Not only are they not separate from the rest of life, they have made the great existential discovery that life takes place inside of them, that they are an infinite consciousness wherein life takes place. No more separation. Awakening is the disappearance of all thoughts, beliefs and perceptions of separation. We're no longer separate from the person in front of us. We're no longer separate from humanity. We're no longer separate from nature. We are in tune. We are completely in unity with nature, with existence. That, the yogis will say, that is true awakening. Mm -hmm.